So we want to get your, your thoughts and opinions on some of the guys coming out in next week's draft. But before we do, we got to wrap up with the NBA Finals. Um, the rally and cry, Bucks and six. Giannis officially has done it. He's gotten a monkey off his back. We all wondered if he could be the guy to lead a team to a championship. So, Combo, I want to start with you. At what point do you think it really clicked for him where he became this dominant force that we saw in the finals? Well, first and foremost, thanks so much for having me back on the show. It's always talking great. Ba- it's always great talking basketball with you guys. Um, with Giannis, what a guy, right? What a guy. Like, he's just so likable, you know? And you guys know I've been critical of him in the past. But when your game changes, opinions change. And he just got a lot better in a lot of different ways. In my opinion, what impressed me the most is the way he passed the basketball. Um, Just connecting his team with passes, with the right pass at the right time, making the right decision. Not even the assists. I think he only had two assists in the last game or something like that. But it's just those passes over time just connect the basketball team. And I think that's what really has been different. Just his vision, his feel has improved. And that's one of the hardest things to improve on the basketball court. So it's been incredible. And just all his sound bites, like he just, it's just, I don't know what a guy, that's all I could say. What a guy, you know, <laughs> that's all I can say about him, man. What a guy 50 piece chicken nuggets. I mean, uh, from uh, Chick-fil-A, what a uh, chicken strips, whatever he got, what a guy, man. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that's definitely a fact because I like just within the past two days, I found a whole new liking for Giannis. Like I, I rock with his personality so much. Like I'm really happy for him that he was able to to lead his team uh, the way he did. You know, this is definitely one of the most dominating superstar performances um, that 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 we've seen. It's definitely definitely ranks high up there, especially the closeout game with with, with the 50 piece. You gotta love that. Um, Congratulations. I, I know I, I got to say I got to say congrats to P.J. Tucker, because I know we've been holding on P.J. Tucker, but you know what I'm saying? With, with, with good reason. But I just still want to say congratulations. Listen, man, anytime you get over the hump and you get that championship ring, he was a starter. He earned it. He deserved it. Um, you know, wasn't the, obviously he's not he's not the, the offensive guy, but every other statistical category he was filling in, you know, the, the numbers. So I got to shout out P.J. P.J. Tucker. And um, the rest of those guys, man, congratulations to the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say, I don't think we were overly critical. I just think that our critique was on point for where they were at as a team. Because yeah. um, even myself, I had to look back at some of the text threads I was in. And I, I thought Milwaukee, I don't know if it was just maybe getting past Brooklyn that it kind of was a relief. But they just seemed so much more free-flowing offensively when they got to Atlanta. Um and combo, I mean, you know, I don't think you were far off in, in any of the things you said because you were always very high on Chris Middleton. And for as great as Giannis was in these last four games, Chris Middleton was the closer on that team. Chris Middleton was the guy who was initiating offense and taking the big shots. And even with the 50 piece in game six, <laughs> Middleton's uh, jumper, mid range game, the, the shot he hit late in that, in that game is what iced it for them. So, you know, I don't think you were far off. I don't think any of us were far off. I, I was critical of Coach Bud. I thought he made some adjustments in this series. They found ways to slow down Chris Paul. Um, do I mean, do we think this is the beginning of something special there in Milwaukee? Because they, they've got this core locked up for the next few years. Are they now a contender that we're going to look at? And, and you shaking your head. I'm not saying a dynasty. I'm not going to go that far and say a dynasty. But do we now look at them differently? Because once you win a championship and that monkey's off your back, you play with a different ease in the playoffs. I think we saw the same thing from Toronto last year. When they finally got over the hump, Kyle Lowry looked like a different player as a champion. You do. But um, I don't I don't anticipate uh, Kyrie and Harden both being hurt in a playoff series uh, again next year. I think that's going to make things a little bit tougher. Um, you know, even going the other side of that, you know, the, with the Suns, I don't anticipate in Anthony Davis, Jamal Murray, Kawhi Leonard all being being injured. I think I think we're going to see uh, two different teams completely uh, in the finals next year. And that's not to take away from Milwaukee. You know, and, and you know, you're right. Once you get the monkey off your back, it's a little, it's a little bit easier. But you know, there's a lot of teams that are going to get a, a lot better just because of guys returning off of injury, including Golden State, who who should have Clay back uh, this this uh, coming season as well. So I don't know about them getting back. I, I do feel like though this was the best thing that could have ever happened to the Milwaukee Bucks because I don't think they ever have to worry about Giannis leaving now that they've won the championship, even though I, I think it, if they do get another one while Giannis is there, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. 
Yeah, you guys mentioned P.J. Tucker. Kudos to P.J. Tucker because he spent some time overseas where he played really well over there, but totally redefined his game and found a role in the NBA and now is a champion. So kudos to P.J. Tucker. Also, obviously, a sneaker legend, right? Um, but, but yeah, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, I talked about this. I think I tweeted it that I think Giannis would eventually win a championship as a second option. And, and I was wrong. He, he was definitely the first option. But I, there was a time where, you know, Chris Middleton could have took on that role. And he is their closer. But you can't really call him the first. You can't call Chris Middleton the first option. I mean, Giannis did it as the first option. And I have to admit that. Now he did. He did, I want. I will say this though, there was, and obviously it's you know because of the free throw shooting, there was a lot of times late in 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 the finals game where you see Giannis just kick it to to Chris Middleton like really, yeah. quick, just you know because you know the foul is coming and you got to get it to the guy who can actually knock those shots down. Yeah, I mean, and also when I said it, people thought it was crazy, and now you hear people they were kind of talking about it during the playoff run, like. You know, is Chris Middleton the main guy? You know, the Batman Robin thing. Like you were hearing it a little bit. So the prediction, I don't think was a bad prediction. I thought it was a good prediction, but it definitely veered towards Giannis being the main guy as, you know, we went through it. And obviously the numbers are incredible. And, yeah, you, can't, you, can't. you know, he, he, he is the main guy. So, I mean, he is the Batman. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, the, the prediction I don't think was far off because it was correct based on what Giannis and the Bucks were showing us at that time. Um, you know, you again, the free throw situation, the lack of offensive uh, moves that, that Giannis has. Obviously, Giannis is a, is a physical specimen that gets to the basket and he punishes you that way. But Chris Middleton gives you a whole different look, his ability to get his own shot, create for others, and then obviously finish at the free throw line if you make that mistake and follow him. So, like I said, I don't think the, you know, the prediction of him being the number two guy was far off. I do like a lot of the comparisons I hear where people say he's closer to Shaq than a LeBron or a KD in terms of, you know, he's a physical dominant beast on the interior who's going to punish you that way if you have the wrong matchup. But sometimes he gives you back free throws. And listen, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to diminish what they did, but at the same time, we can't forget that this situation plays out completely different if the Brooklyn Nets are completely healthy, right? Yeah, yeah. This and the Go ahead. No, no, and, and, then, and then to take it a step further, this situation may play out completely different if Chris Paul doesn't stink it up in game four of the finals, right? In game four, when Phoenix is up nine points and Devin Book is giving you everything he's got, if Chris Paul just plays a halfway decent game, we're talking about a 3-1 series and maybe the outcome is different. Nonetheless, Milwaukee found a way to do it. Giannis had a historic performance. But to, to the main point of, is he the number one guy? Yeah, he's the number one guy, but he's the number one guy with a lot of flaws. And that's why your prediction, I don't think, was far off. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about ifs, I mean, if... Kevin Durant's foot was like an inch back. I mean, yeah. things would have been totally different. Yeah, so as Durant, well. Durant wears but, like uh, like a, a size bigger shoe. Yeah, than he actually is. Yeah, they keep. They so keep if he was wearing the right size, they would they win that game. Yeah, and another thing about the prediction is, I said Giannis would win a championship. So the prediction's half right, no matter what. Because <laughs> I'm right, because I could have been wrong, but I'm wrong, so I could have been right. So you know, no, but I did say he'd win a championship. He will eventually win a championship. And then, no, but you but know. but when you when you say that, you know what I mean. Like again, like Eric said, you, you're basing this off of the Bucks' history. You're not just pulling this out of out of thin air when you make. Yeah, it. and it sounded crazy at the time. Because sorry to cut you off, uh, it sounded crazy at the time because he was an MVP already. You know. Yeah, but 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 you know, but even still, every MVP is not an NBA champion right now. Right, right. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. So you definitely there was there was basis to that to that that assessment. And again we're looking at a, a situation where we had a, a, an increased amount of superstar injuries this season yes, and, and, and moving into this year's playoffs, you know what I mean? And not, and that's not to say that maybe, you know, cause who knows, maybe the Bucks can still beat the Nets if Kyrie and Harden are both healthy. I just believe that if they are healthy, it goes the other way and the Nets are moving on in the playoffs. But, you know, listen, who knows? Maybe the Bucs still get the, get the W. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, Bucks won the championship, you know, and uh, they did all the right things. They put themselves in position to win it and they and they did it. You know, they did it. And kudos to them, man. It's uh, it was incredible. It's actually a great story. And, you know, kudos to them for sure. It's great for the league. It, it honestly it is. Um, because, you know, at, at a day and age now where everyone is, is looking for the team up, the secondary superstar, which Giannis spoke about, 
he is a homegrown talent per se. He, he was drafted there. He's developed himself into this MVP and all-star caliber play. And obviously a, probably, you know, he's one of the top six guys in the league, wherever you want to rank him. Mm-hmm. And then they win a championship with him. He could have, he, he could have put a lot of pressure on Milwaukee and not re-up before the season. And then it would have always been that cloud lingering over like, or if they lose, is he walking? Is he leaving? Is he out of Milwaukee? Are they going to lose, you know, arguably the greatest player they've had since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? He re-ups, they win. And now the NBA gets to sell this, this model of if you do it the right way, if you draft it the right way, right? Because Middleton was also their draft pick. If you draft it the right, right way, you can find your dynamic duo without having to search free agency. This is big for small market teams. Um, not to get ahead of ourselves and not to be a creature at the moment, but w- where do you rank? his performance in these finals historically, you know, the, the f- three out of four games going for 40 piece, um, obviously capped off with the, with the 50 point night total in the series. He scored 215 points. I think some, that ranks somewhere at seventh all times in, in, in a final series, just watching him do it. Where do you rank it combo in terms of historical value and where he's placed with that performance? He's up there. I mean, Jordan had some really unbelievable years. You have to, you know, a lot of those Jordan years, um, Kawhi was terrific with Toronto. Uh, there's been all kinds of, you know, crazy King performances James. in the finals. Well, What'd you say? King James, you got to, you got to. Yeah, LeBron. I mean, it's tough. It's tough. But you know what really happened? That last game was so impressive because of the free throw shooting, man. That's a, that's a really game in the 50. And there was the efficiency as well. I mean, from the field, from the free throw line, it was just incredible. Um, yeah, it's probably up there, but I don't know if it's the greatest of all time or anything like that. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not. It's not the greatest of all time. It's definitely not that. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, you know, even though it was like just godly numbers though that that he was putting up, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's necessarily the greatest of of all time. Um, D Wade. I mean, how, how do we rank it against D Wade with Miami? We got to look back at that. That was a crazy. Well, I'm like, man, that, that, that was underrated when it comes to all time finals performances. And then it, also, you got to look at uh, level of competition. I guess you'd have to factor that in too, because look at it, take a guy like Chauncey Billups in, in with the Pistons getting finals MVP when they played the Lakers. That shit, that's probably about the toughest competition you're going to get in the finals. Then you got you got Duncan. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of guys that you like. It's, it's tough to rank them like. The finals performances, man. It is. It's really. Yeah, yeah it, it is. I mean, it's, it's, you got to throw Kobe up in. The, in you know what I mean? Right. Like, well, yeah, Co- Kobe and Shaq. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 up there because of the, the the circumstances surrounding it, right? So he's coming back from the dislocated knee, and we didn't know how healthy he was going to be. And then you go down 0-2, right? You go down 0-2, and then it's like, all right, can they even can they even get some games in a series to make it competitive? And then he just starts just just ringing off these these. 40 points, 40 points. The one game he doesn't have 40, he finishes with 26 and 14, which is still phenomenal numbers, right? Then you you close it out with the 50 piece at home. When you look at- What did the, Middleton have that game when he had 26? He didn't. Uh, that was Middleton's 40 oh, point game. Yeah, he had a 40 point game. Yeah, yeah. he had the 40 yeah. piece that night. Yeah. And then you go to game six, Holiday is not shooting it well, but his defense obviously was top notch. Middleton's not shooting it well, but he makes some shots late. But- if Giannis just goes for 40, they might lose that game. That game was yeah. really close and they needed every Giannis bucket. And like you said, the free throws were big. I I was curious to see how, if he could maintain that throughout the game. Because one of the things I talked about that I thought the Nets didn't do in their game seven was I thought they should have gone to a hack of Giannis. They should have slowed down the game, gone to a hack of Giannis and forced him to make free throws. Because Kevin Durant was gassed by the time they got to overtime. Kevin Durant had to play every minute. Yeah, I was wondering, like, would Monty think about doing that would he try to slow down that momentum we knew the building was going to be going crazy would he try to slow slow things down and you couldn't do it because Giannis was making all his free throws so you could never entertain the idea of going to a hack of Giannis it's it's up there man I mean is it number one no but I, I definitely think it's in that top 10 conversation when you when you oh, factor yeah. in everything that take that that was involved with this series yeah, yeah. top 10 I would say so yeah just because both sides of, of the of the of the basketball I mean Finishing the, the series with five blocks and then uh, the, the block early on on uh, John Drayden early in the season that they were kind of comparing that with the uh, with the LeBron block in uh, in game seven. As far as, you know, being a two way superstar, he definitely was elite on both ends of the basketball throughout this in, in, entire series. And then on top of that, he was elite 
rebounding the basketball as well. Like literally, probably the only thing that Giannis doesn't do is pass the ball and facilitate like like that. Like maybe a, a LeBron or, or Kobe or one of his other guys. But other than that, like he pretty much did everything you could you want of your superstar to do. And when the thing that we were getting on Giannis the most about the free throws he started knocking down the free throw. So it was like, you know, what isn't this guy doing out there? You know, definitely well-deserved for that finals MVP. And and I got to shout out uh, Holiday too, because his defense was amazing. Um, yeah. That all, all, all defense, you know what I'm saying? He, he definitely deserved that spot because he was giving guys fits. Um, you know, once they started putting the pressure on Chris Paul, bringing up the ball, you know, that kind of, change the series but drew holiday just just keeping busy keeping on chris paul and just being a pest a, a thorn in his side um you know shout out to drew holiday and then give him you know uh, with game five giving him the big scoring night to help out on the offensive end of the of the basketball as well so i want to commend drew holiday uh also this is Dion grant from the new york Giants super bowl champ and you're watching real fans real talk Real 